I spent a lot of time in the past year teaching whiskey a retreat to hand. In other words, when he has something in his mouth, if I put my hand down, he spits it out. My signal for spit it out is thank you. And he does it with me on walks all the time. I even had a gun dog lesson with him before Christmas and his dummy retrieve was excellent. There was no problem getting dummies back. There's no problem getting toys back from him on a walk. So with all confidence last week, I explained to the owner how I did it and I decided to demonstrate with his favorite toy and he point blank refused to spit the toy out. Point blank refused to spit the toy out. Um, we had a standoff, nothing bad happened. I stood my ground and um, he finally spat the toy out and I was embarrassed, but I was also thinking this through afterwards. Thank you, good boy. I was also thinking this through, there you go, good boy. And um, thank you, good lad. Thinking it through afterwards, there you go. Um, and I realized that he had never been trained spit out in the domestic context that is his own home. Now, generalization in dog training is about the dog understanding that when you give them a cue or a signal to, to act in a particular way or perform a particular behavior, they understand that cue regardless of the environment. So whatever environment the dog is in, he knows what thank you mean. And he had never been trained in that environment. He had never been trained to drop the toy at home. In fact, if anything at home, there was a history of, um, it was never, there's no aggression in this dog, by the way, none whatsoever. Um, he's an absolute sweetheart, but he does lean towards um, taking things and going away. So early stages of resource guarding is I take the thing and I run off. Um, there was definitely a history due to exasperation by the owners of him, uh, of them approaching him, taking things away from him, or trying to take things away from him, and mostly failing, to be honest. Um, so that's why they were struggling. And <laughs> there was def definitely a, a sense of despair when I spoke to them last week. Um, we'd never trained in that environment, and the word thank you, as you've seen with you today, they go, find it, find it, yes, good boy. Just wasn't in his vocabulary in that environment. Thank you, good boy. Um, so, I, I was thinking about this afterwards and I was thinking it, it, of how it goes wrong in the average pet household. And actually in this case, I put my hands up and say how it's gone wrong with me and my training with whiskey. All our, all our retrieves are outdoors. All our retrieves out, all, all our retrieves are um, outdoors, good boy. Um, all our retrieves are in a play context and none of them are in a domestic, normal day to day, he steals things, he steals things on me context. So, we are going to do some work today on picking up and delivering to hand typical household items that I am going to put down and use several techniques to get back from whiskey. Good lad. Because I think it's important that you have multiple tools in your box. Now, um, I'm going to do it today with some typical household items, but it's no good, with, uh, it's no good that I do this here in my home with typical household items and not practice it with the owner in their home. So we're also going to do some sessions in their home with typical household items. I think the conclusion there is, you cannot wait to teach your dog thank you or drop it in a situation where the dog is already stolen and guarded. It has to be trained in advance of that. The trust has to be built up. So for every 10 approaches, <laughs> for every 10 approaches and um, exchanges that you do with your dog, Really, we would ideally only be looking for one of them being uh, a scenario that you haven't set up. So a typical thieving situation. For every situ every training you do, nine of them are, as we're going to do now, orchestrated. And only one is a uh, ad hoc um, thieving scenario that your dog finds himself in date. Okay, so I'm going to show you the items that we're going to use. If your dog has a history of any aggression at all, over items please do not do this please um talk to a qualified behaviorist to help you with those situations do not do this if your dog has sit good boy. if your dog has a uh, any aggression at all good boy um this dog does not have any aggression and as you can see i have also sit thank you 
sit. Good boy. As you can see, um, this dog also has a pre-taught thank you, um, but we've never trained it on typical household items before. Good lad. Thank you. That's a nice swap. Sit. Good. Get it. Um, so I'm going to show you several different ways to do um, this today, okay? Um, if you need to have your dog on a lead for it, then absolutely fine. Put your dog on a lead. I've closed all the doors to this room, so he cannot run off with the toy or with the item. That's, that's really important. We've set up the context to maximise our success. Good boy. Sit. Okay, so um, the first technique I'm going to use, sit. first technique I'm going to use is as I'm doing now, sit. Using a pre-learned sit. Thank you, good boy. A pre-learned behavior, get it? Um, using a pre-learned behavior, which is his sit, to get him to drop various household items. Here's what we're using. A sock, it's big. If you're worried at all about your dog swallowing, please use big articles that are not easy for them to get in their mouth. This dog doesn't have a history of swallowing, so we're okay. A sock that's got a, a knot in it. Sit. Good boy. Sit. I promise we'll get started. I'm using a cat collar. I'm using a pen, a biro, not a felt tip. A packet of tissues, a glasses case, and a fabric ribbon. Okay? Typical household items. Right. We're going to start with the biggest one, which is the um, glasses case. So I'm just going to put these other ones out of reach for now. All right. So glasses case. Good boy. Off you go. Okay. Sit. Good. Nice. So unless you have taught break your dog to sit and hold, most dogs, if you ask them to sit, pretty. Most dogs, if you ask them to sit will drop the item because it's really difficult for dogs find it, to sit and hold something. Sit. Nice, good boy. He has a really good sit. Break, a really good sit. And so I want to use that to my advantage and I'm asking him if he will sit because I know the toy will drop out of his mouth or the article will drop out of his mouth. I have some little um, dry kibble in here, nothing too exciting. Um, that's our first technique. Good boy, sit. So again with the toy, toy drops out of his mouth. I'll just do that to the side so you can see him. Find it, go find it. Good boy, here, sit. Ah, good boy, super, find it. Yeah, sit. Good lad. So that toy gets dropped or the article gets dropped because the sit cancels the hold. I'm giving you multiple tools in your box. It might not work for every dog, but it's definitely something worth trying. Okay, right, we're gonna move on to the sock, which is a harder one. All right, because this has been worn by me for a couple of nights. So this will be a really attractive prize for him. Okay, good boy. Now, I'm going to see if he'll do thank you, good. And I'm gonna swap it for a piece of food. At this point, because he's in training, I am going to use food. Because I've prior taught a good thank you, a spit out, um, which I'll put a little link to the spit it out way I teach spit it out um, in, a, in, a, in a different post. Because I've prior taught that, I'm using boring food like kibble. In theory, I shouldn't need food, but because he's in training still and I really want to maximise his cooperation, I am going to use some um, boring food for him, but if you needed to use a higher value food, that would be absolutely fine. There is never any problem going to arise if you are swapping valued articles for high value food. Ready, Whisk? Find it. Good boy. Thank you. Good. Now, I'm going to make this a little bit harder on him because I'm going to start a tuggy game. Gotcha. Yeah. I'm going to sacrifice my sock. Thank you. See how much harder it is. Now what I'm going to, boy. Now what I'm going to do, catch, yeah, can you turn around so everybody can see you? Good, I'm going to put my hand under his collar before I say thank you. That just stops him being able to pull backwards and continue the game. Catch, yeah, good boy, clever, thank you. Good, nice, get it, good boy. Ready, catch, yeah, bit of a tug. Very apt. 
active when I tug, I'm very animated when I tug. When I want the thing back, I'm not going to continue tugging. I'm going to relax everything and I'm going to say thank you. Nice. Off you go. Good lad. Right, we're going to swap the article again. I'm going to use the cat collar this time. This has been worn by a cat, although he's very good with cats, so he probably won't. Everybody can just see your bum and you've got such a handsome face. Sit. <laughs> um, he's very good with cats, so it might not be that novel to him, but I suspect it will. It probably smells of cat and it's also got a nice flimsy rubbery material, which he's probably going to find particularly good. The method that I'm going to use this time is distraction and diversion. And when you have a problem with dogs stealing things, one of the very first things I get all my clients to do is to make a distraction and diversion list sit. Good boy. Is to make a distraction and diversion list sit. And that distraction... Sit. Good boy. That distraction and diversion list um, is a great way of taking the attention off the stolen item and getting the attention onto something else instead. Something that's got nothing to do with the dog, break, but something he knows very well. Such as ringing the doorbell, picking up a collar and lead, rattling some keys, um, knocking on the door. This particular noise I think most dogs know. Or a, pay, a rapper noise, this noise. Because it often means uh, there is food coming. So, I'm going to knock on the door. You'll see me leave, leaving the room. I'm going to give him this, let him mess around with for it for a couple of seconds, and I'm going to go and knock on the front door and see whether he comes running. Now, hands on heart, I, I don't have a doorbell. It might be that the doorbell works best for this dog, but on your list should be option A, option B, option C, so they've got a few to work with. All right, so I'm going to let him mess around with that for a little bit. The more, <laughs> bless you, you're such a good boy. You're trying to do retrieves. Okay, so I'm going to leave him behind. item, I would want to close the door between the dog and the item before I brought the dog back into the room. Actually, this is not a bad thing to do when you're in training, because what we want to do is show him that there's no value in this. So when he came back in, I didn't snatch it out of the way real quick. I actually left it there so that he could pick it up again. The more value you put on this item by snatching it away, the less likely the dog is going to, um, is going to want to give it up. So let's go again. Following me. Hello there. Hi. And back in we go. And in training, I have no problem with the dog picking that article up again. In fact, I might even ask him to. I did. Nice. Thank you, baby. What a good boy you are. Going to do some retreats. Turning everything into a game always helps. Woohoo! So if it's something that, thank you, if it's something that isn't valuable, and I'm happy to turn it into a game. Let's do some retrieves. Oh, you look, you Mr. Sweetie. Oh, yeah, you're Mr. Sweetie. Are you ready? Are you steady? Are you ready? Sit. 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 Get it. Ah. Good boy. Thank you. Sit. Good. Sit. Good. Sit. Good boy. Find it. Good boy. Sit. There you go. There's your spit out. Get it. One more time. Okay, we're going to move on to the tissue. Get it, find it, one more time for me. Good lad. Thank you. Good boy. Tissues. This is something that dogs will grab. It's quite common for dogs to grab stuff like this, even out of your pocket. It's high value, this one. I'm going to just ignore him for a second so that it's more natural when I drop it. I've dropped it rather than thrown it for him. I want to see what his response is. I'm going to sit down here. Can you sit? Good. Nice. Well done. Can you turn sign on so people can see? Can you sit? Good. And drop it again. Now you can see here, good boy, thank you, good. You can see here that as the game goes on, get it. And if you've got a tiny puppy, I would only be doing one item at a time. This is a dog who's a year old now and has a lot of training. So we can push him a little bit and do a little bit more in terms of stamina. But if you've got a tiny puppy, just do one item, give them a break and do the next one the next day. Um, you can see here that he, as the game goes on, that he's getting the idea that this is the retrieve game. 
And that's exactly what we want. We want to generalize it to lots and lots and lots of items in a trained environment. And then we want to start orchestrating you randomly dropping something, but being ready with one of your options. Okay. Thank you, darling. That's interesting. So this is the harder one. Sit. Good boy. Remember, I don't want to snatch the article. So interestingly, the pen seems to be the most attractive for him. Break. That was the one he was least, less inclined to give up. Thank you. Good. Nice. Sit. Clever. Break. Sit. Remember, I don't want to put value on the article by grabbing it. Break. Now I'm going to bend down and pick it up when he's gone somewhere else. Okay. Last one of all. Ah, it's a ribbon. It's a ribbon. It's a ribbon. That's very nice control. You ready, get it? Yeah. Let's make a little game of this one. Good boy. Yeah. Let's do a bit of toe. So now I'm, I'm now being the owner who's desperate to get the thing back off the dog. You get it. You give it to me. I want it. Give it to me. No, no. Give it here. Give it. Give it here. Give it. Sit. Good! Clever boy! And is it safe? We can play another game. Get it! Yeah! Oh, well done, well done! And our goal is to get to the stage where everything is seen as a toy. If everything is a toy and everything is a game, there's no conflict, there's no confrontation. Thank you! Good! Get it! Um, there's no confrontation, there's, there's no conflict, everything is a game, all items are toys. And I think very, very often people put a lot of emphasis on what's your toy and what's not your toy. Ready? Whiskey, get it! And I think it's really important that the dog sees everything as a toy, and if everything is a toy, everything is worth sharing. Thank you! Good, get it! This is what we're aiming for. Mid tug. Thank you! Get it! Yay! Good boy. Thank you! Get it! Yes! Oh, you're super clever. You are super clever. You are super clever. So let's do a quick summary. I'm going to give you a TED while I do a quick summary. We can use distraction and diversion. So we can go out of the room and do something else with the, that the dog sees as worth coming to investigate. Knocking on the door, picking up your car keys, picking up your leash. Good boy. Um, thank you. Good boy. Nice. Sit. 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 Picking up your car keys, picking up your leash, rattling food, knocking on the door, pretending there's someone at the door. All of those things work really well often to get the dog to leave the thing behind and come and investigate. If you need to get that thing back, then close the door between the dog and the thing. If you don't need to get the thing back, go back and have a game with it. Another um, option we, we chose was to teach a pre-trained drop. Um, I did a little bit of it there, and as I said, I'll put a link to me teaching it with a dog who's never done it before. Um, teach a pre-trained drop, the dog drops the toy, you give it back to him. Drops the article, you give it back to him. Swapping for food is never a problem. Never, ever, ever, ever are you going to end up with a dog who is reluctant to give stuff back if he thinks it's worth bartering. Where's that toy? Where is it? Find it. Find it. Find it. Okay. Yay! Good! So he knew I had food. The only way he's going to get that food is if he barters. And the last one of all is using a sit. Sit, good, because dogs break. Dogs find it very difficult, break, to hold something while they're sitting. In fact, many obedience trainers have struggled to get the dog to hold things while they're still sitting. So we're canceling the hold or the hang on to by asking the dog to perform a really simple cue that most dogs know, and that cue is sit. Good boy. Before we finish, can you show everybody how handsome you are? Sit. 